Uh, so uh, I'm Aviv from uh, Vayar. Uh, the meaning of Vayar is uh, to see. That's uh, old biblical Hebrew. Um, when we started Vayar, the, the idea was to be able to look into the human body, uh, to create a sensor that, uh, make, uh, that will make imaging a very kind of a low cost and uh, accessible to many people around the world. Uh, I'll show you a few things uh, that uh, we, did, uh, we did in that uh, area, but uh, when we started, we understood that the same sensors that we're creating for breast cancer imaging is relevant to many, many other uh, applications. Uh, so let's start. Um, so we started with a kind of a B2B uh, approach, uh, looking for you know, big uh, concept, big imaging machines, etc. But at a certain point, we thought that it would be really cool to get this technology to the hands of people. So we created a device called Wallabot. Here I hold it in my hand. It's that small. Um, and the idea was to put our chip that you see over here on the side, um, on this board, uh, and be able to give uh, what we call kind of superpowers. We are able to look into uh, objects, not just at objects, but also into objects, uh, and detect different things. So what makes this uh, sensor so unique? So if you look at uh, your typical uh, sensor, usually when we talk about augmented reality or virtual reality, we talk about a lot about optics. Um, in this case, uh, you see the only at the outside. If you want to see inside, obviously optics cannot penetrate. And this technology can uh, see through materials, can penetrate walls basically, bypass obstacles, uh, you can hide it in places where uh, you don't have to show it, right? It doesn't have to be a camera with line of sight. Uh, so it's a pretty cool kind of technology that uh, you can use. Seamless operation, there's no issues with uh, light conditions, uh, smoke, steam, fog, uh, we don't really care. And uh, very important, uh, no camera, no privacy violation. We talked with many people on smart homes and uh, in general, people don't really like to uh, get their picture out, uh, especially when not when they're home. Um, and it would be really cool if we can create an image of a person without, you know, have the characteristics, without having the exact features, uh, get all the advantages without the disadvantages of privacy. Obviously, optics has many advantages, but this can be a complementary concept. So how does it work? Uh, basically, the chip that we uh, developed has a very large uh, number of uh, transmitters and receivers. We have 24 transceivers uh, on that chip, uh, running from almost zero to 20 gigahertz at a very, very low power. These are radio waves. Um, and with this uh, uh, concept of what you call MIMO radar, 3D MIMO radar, we're able to capture the entire volume of, uh, of an area, no matter what it is, and analyze it in real time uh, to many, many voxels. So we can get reflections from all of these voxels, and all of, the, all of this is done in parallel. So it's not like uh, beam switching or anything else that you might be familiar with. But we're actually uh, c collecting and analyzing all the signals from, from a room or from a certain area uh, in the same time. So this is a, an extremely sophisticated technology. Uh, you can find it in many military uses. Um, but in this case, we're actually bringing that capability to the hands of the common person to play with. So that's how uh, Wallabot uh, works. So let's talk about some, uh, uh, some applications. Um, and all the applications I'm going to show you are based on exactly on the same uh, sensor, so the same hardware, but uh, just by playing with software and algorithms, you can do many, many things. So a simple example, uh, probably uh, some of you try to renovate their home, uh, and uh, there's always the, what we call the oops fa factor. Uh, you open the, you think that there's nothing in the wall, you go drill or you go and kind of take the wall down and suddenly you see the main sewage pipe there or, you know, electricity. It's not uh, real fun, but imagine that you can have like a magic wand that can go over the wall and suddenly you see a, a 3D image of what's uh, inside the wall before you tear it down. So that's what uh, Wallabot can, can do. Here you see a piece from the doctor's show in, uh, in L.A., uh, what you see here, this is a drywall, 
and we can do it with the uh, concrete, uh, we can do it with hollow blocks, and here you see the pipe uh, inside this, behind this wall, and this is based on a cell phone, a simple Samsung uh, phone, and here you see uh, that uh, pipe, and obviously we can, you know, change the position of the phone, and you're going to see the pipe changing, because basically you can see a 3D image of what's inside uh, the wall. Uh, we can uh, detect many things inside the wall, for example, leaks, uh, difference in moisture, for example, etc. and you see all of it in 3D. So it's not like uh, those stud finders, like, you know, beep, beep, or whatever, you don't really know what's going on. You can really, really see uh, what's inside. So this is one example of uh, what this sensor can do. Another thing that uh, uh, this sensor can do is uh, track or monitor. Uh, not only uh, uh, the position of the people, let's say, around the home, but also their vital signs. So, for example, if I put this on a helmet and I can uh, look now in the room, I will not only see the, the person moving, but I will also be able to track his breathing. Uh, and if he's sitting, uh, we can also even uh, track his pulse. So you can really know what's going on. So if someone, you know, getting nervous or... Um, you know, he's kind of a bit sick, maybe you can see the pulse changing, but you don't have to touch the person. So if you imagine, you know, augmented reality, when I'm looking at a room, I can not only see the person or the image of a person, I can also see, you know, the vital signs of these people. So that's a, a, an example, and the, the way people can uh, use it, and this is something that we are working with the companies today, is when you go, for example, for firemen, they go into a, to a house, you know, there's fire, there's smoke, uh, they cannot see anything. Uh, and with this sensor, which they put on themselves, they can track the different uh, people in the room without really seeing them and, you know, uh, understand if the person is alive or not, if there's an issue or not. So this is an example how you use this technology in real life, uh, giving them the capabilities that they need. Uh, another example is to understand the, the speed uh, and the, the distance uh, of uh, the objects around you. Uh, very similar to what you have you know, in uh, sophisticated car radars, but this is actually something that you can put on your phone uh, and can be processed on your phone. Uh, obviously, simple things in life you know, that we all want to kind of solve one day is uh, helping the blind. You know, people use sticks today, but... With this thing, they can really see what's uh, around them, and that can really translate it into signals to tell them you know, where to go, if there's something up here that can, uh, they can hit, uh, the targets around them, uh, etc. So this is uh, another example uh, of uh, this technology. And then there's the gaming uh, world, everything that relates to uh, you know, gaming, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality. We can track things to... Uh, very uh, uh, fine kind of resolution. Uh, we can track minute uh, uh, movements with this, uh, with this sensor. Um, so what else this technology can do? This is uh, an example for Homeland Security, but it's the same thing for, uh, let's say, if you want to take your measurements of the, your body without taking off your clothes for retail, for example. So what you see over here, this is uh, our different uh, Brutus from the lab. Uh, we covering with different clothes, and here this is a plastic knife. Here you see Brutus after, after the imaging, and here you see the knife uh, over here. So as you can see, we don't have the exact features of Brutus, but we do get the dimensions of him. And this is again all done with you know, this magic wand that uh, uh, we're using. Another uh, uh, example, and the last one, but not, not the least from our perspective, this is looking into the human body. What you see on the left, this is a, a mammography, a, a, an image of mammography. This is cancer over here, as you can see. And this is coming from our uh, imaging device. This is not Wallabot. This is something a bit more sophisticated. Uh, this is horizontal. This is vertical. This is where the nipple is. And you see that the tumor is above the nipple. Okay? This is the same breast. This one is with mammography and this one with our device. Just to give you a comparison, this device will cost $3,000. This device costs $300,000. Okay, so this is already in uh, clinical trials. Uh, we did tens of uh, experiments on, uh, on women, uh, and hopefully this is going to be kind of the next uh, mammography. So this is something that you can do with this uh, technology, uh, and obviously that can be very helpful to many people. 
Um, 3D imaging everywhere. We believe that this sensor can go in many, many places, um, in home, in the car, um, everywhere, because one of the key uh, thing here is that we don't need really high uh, commuting uh, power. Uh, basically, a uh, Samsung phone will do, um, or Apple, whoever obsessed about Apple. Um, so uh, this is how the different devices, different sizes, shapes, you know, embedded or mobile, uh, Etc. Uh, thank you. I'm okay with time. Yeah. Good. I have time for questions. <laughs> so, I was asked to break the record of questions asked in a session. So, anybody has questions? Yeah. So, uh, for anything that relates to tracking and the sensing of uh, breathing, for example. Tracking is up to 15 meters because we're limited by FCC. Uh, sensing of breathing, for example, of two or three people is about five meters uh, away. And everything that is uh, imaging, it really depends on the way of operation. It can be uh, something like 50 centimeters to a few meters.